Welcome back to another Once Human Tips and Tricks video. My name is Jalan, and if you missed my first video, it's available in the upper right hand corner. Today's video starts with a comment from that video. Somebody asked me to go over memetics and the cradle. In order to get into this menu, you're going to press the letter O, or if you're already in your character inventory and whatnot, it is listed under cradle. Memetics on the left is your life skills or artisan skills or whatever you'd like to call them. Your cradle on the right is really your combat tree for lack of a better word. Now, if you're just getting started and you're still in the first zone, your cradle will not be unlocked. Cradle does not unlock until you first reach Mayor's Market. In order to do this, you will have to follow the quests in the starter zone. You'll have to finish up the Dayton Wetlands quests. If you don't know what I'm talking about, make sure you go back and watch that first video. This is basically where I say to follow V's instructions. As you come into the cradle, you will notice that my cradle is unlocked to three slots. That's because this particular uh, character has already finished the second zone. When you first get to Myers Market, you will only have the slot in the very topmost part available for augmenting. Now, you should also have your season start. You'll have these four options at the top. Whether you want to uh, optimize pistols or submachine guns, crossbows, or melee attacks. Personally, I thought the crossbow was about the best option. Upon a kill using a crossbow, there's a 30% chance to refill an arrow from inventory. I thought that was really handy. As I've moved now into the end of chapter two, the beginning of the third zone, uh, I am finding the crossbow is no longer effective against some of the human soldiers. You will notice that I have all six rows unlocked. You do this by collecting deviations. If you're struggling to collect deviations, I will be able to show you where at least one is and a really handy guy for your base. When you go into the other side and you go into memetics, you will find that this is really your life uh, skills sort of thing. It's broken down into four categories. This first category of infrastructure, this is really your gathering and basic materials production. Now, all of this should be open at this point on all the servers. It is possible that some of the servers have not yet reached the last phase, so you may not have this down. In this first infrastructure, I will show you that auto logging and auto mining is unlocked. I highly recommend doing whatever you need to do to beg, borrow, steal to get the electronic accessories, the rubber, the high voltage in order to get these things. Uh, the next category over is crafting. Crafting is your weapons, your armor, your ammo, and your combat consumables. You will want to make sure to keep a healthy supply of adrenaline shots and activators on you all the time, but there's an easy way to get a handful of these each day. Your third category is managing, and this is food, water, power, and planting. Uh, a lot of people aren't noticing that it really they're kind of skipping over some stuff because they're not really worried about cooking. They're finding stuff in the wild, but really this is where you get your solar generation, your electrical parts, and so on. And finally, you have your second crafting window, and your second crafting window is your base building, your base defense, and your vehicles. Now, if you followed my first video, you got your vehicle for free, but if you're finding now that your vehicle needs to be repaired, you actually need to build the garage, and when you come over here into the garage, the control panel, it will allow you to manage your vehicles, and repair is here on the bottom. As we go back into the memetics window, one thing that is easy to overlook is going to be this specializations available up here in the upper left hand corner. When you come in, you are going to have a choice of four different options per level. Now, I have already chosen my first four, but in my last one, you will see that I could pick Chainsaw Horror, I could pick Echo Blast, I could pick Mini Canner, or I could pick Intense Defense. Now, I do like one thing in de Intense Defense. It does say structural items that can be placed in your territory at any one time is plus 100. So I'm going to go ahead and confirm that. And then it will tell me here. When you, act, when you activate the specialization effect, you will receive a bonus to the memetic specialization effect when you build a facility or use formula to create an item. Now, it will say that this applies to stone supports, stone roofs, stone doors and windows, and stone stairs. I have not yet unlocked all of these, but as I go in to my build menu, you will notice that some of them painted door painted double doors windows you will see that arrow that you will see that upper 
uh, pointing up arrow in the upper left hand corner of the icon. These show that these are all being boosted. The same will be in a place for disassembly bench. I happen to choose the buff to disassembly bench. However, if I go back into that menu, what you're going to see is that it's going to say that I've extended extended my inventory you will see backpack expansion new formula backpack expansion when this item is in your backpack max load is plus 30 to 60. now unfortunately some people were saying oh my inventory hasn't gone up that is because you actually have to craft the item you will see this in my my bag i have the backpack expansion it is good for another 11 days it is not a very expensive craft you will need to come over here to your intermediate supplies workbench and when you do you will see that i have my backpack expander uh it is metal scraps it is hide and it is rubber so it is not an intensive uh craft but it does increase your maximum load by 30. you'll also notice that i have gravel and log on the go uh it gives me a weight reduction by 30% for gravel, log, and ores. However, I will probably end up switching that out because later in the episode, I'm going to show you how to get the beaver deviation so that it can do all of the gathering of wood. And if you do mining on your own, you should at this point have run into this little guy. And this guy is the Digby boy, but you can rename him if you don't like Digby boy. And he will do all of your harvesting for you. Now, interestingly enough, if you can't find tin and you can't find aluminum and you can't find iron and your base is still in the starter zone, Digby, he doesn't care. He's going to find aluminum, iron, tin, all of that because he's a good boy. Another thing that I saw people struggling with is people were making these rainwater collectors and because these only collect water when it is raining, people were saying, well, I don't have enough water. Well, interestingly enough, you don't need to collect your water through there. What you can do is you can come to any body of water and gently approach the edge. And if you hit G, you will notice you will pull out your water skin and you will start gathering a lot of dirty water. As you can see, 15 each tick on the left hand side of the screen. Now, I did say approach the water gently. You will notice if I walk too far into the water, uh, I have entered contaminated water and you see my insanity in my health bar is growing. For those of you that are concerned about the insanity and how you get rid of it, you can do that with sanity gummies or of course you can lay in your bed. Now, if you need salt, some people have said, where do I find salt? You want to do that exact same thing that I just did, but you want to do it along the sea, anywhere down along this area. If you step gingerly into the water, you will be able to pick up seawater. And when you come over to your stove, the only ingredient required to make salt is seawater and logs. As the game is moving along, there are several menus in the escape key you want to take a look at. First thing you want to do is you want to go into escape and you want to go into this event tab. And when you come in here, you want to make sure that first and foremost, you pick up your login rewards. Login rewards are weekly, so you can pick them up, but you want to double back and you want to come into Astral Doolets up here in the corner. It's kind of easy to overlook if you didn't click on it. You'll notice that it tells you uh, you will receive 20 Astral Doolets at 6 a.m. every day and can exchange them for special items. Well, it's here that you can get Sanity Gummies, you can get Activators, you can get Adrenaline Shots, and that isn't going to cost you anything. You're not going to be forced to craft them. They're basically your free pickup. The adrenaline shot is a little pricey. It is going to use up your whole day's worth of doolets. The other ones you can pick up whatever you want mixed, but you are limited to eight uh, in the cycle. So you can't pick up more than eight, eight and one. Another thing you want to look into in the menu is you want to make sure that you're coming into this uh, PVE menu. And you want to make sure that you're coming into season goals and you want to make sure that you're accomplishing all of these. I talked about this in the first video. I do want to tell you the second week's worth, most of these complete and they are not repeatable. The other thing you want to take a look at is in event. You come down here and you have the treasure hunters handbook. One thing that threw me off is I am completely done in this character. But as I go in, I have to not only claim each of these items, 
But when I get done claiming all four, what I was neglecting to do was come up here and click on the chapter, because when you click on the chapter, you will also get your star Tomb. You will get the other item that is going to be used to unlock the cosmetic. As I said earlier, I would show you a place where you could pick up the logging beaver. The logging beaver can be picked up in a couple of different places, but this is the one that I find with the most uh, success of him being here. He is down here in the Broken Delta, uh, down on this little fishing shack where there is often this event called Surge of Fish. Uh, if you come here, you will almost always find the beaver here. He is on a 15 minute respawn and he's pretty easy to pick up. Uh, you can have up to 10 gathering uh, deviations at your property. So one of the things you may find is you may find this bus. At first, I couldn't quite figure out what the trick with the bus was, but I figured out that if you board the bus and what you can do is you can come in here and you can get this free gear crate. You can do this every day. Speaking of little tips and tricks, if you want to listen to the radio in game, on the left hand side, it actually says X radio. It's actually not, it's actually C. As you can see, as I'm hitting C, I'm cycling through. I'm not actually playing the music on the, on the video recording because I don't know if the music is DMCA free or not. Uh, but if you want to listen to it in game, it's C, not X. And if you're streaming and you're looking for good music to play and you want it to be DMCA free, copyright free, check out PGN Music in the description below for all my fellow content creators. Another little tip and trick, if you're looking for both the Disco Ball and the Gingerbread House, if you come here in the Dayton Wetlands, uh, south of Rotten Manor and north by northwest of the Deadsville town, there is this cliff plateau. There are usually two deviations hanging up here. Hanging out up here. One is the Gingerbread House. This is going to generate pieces for you that you can use to build things. The other is the disco ball and these are both here most of the time there's actually supposed to be one more thing up here and i don't know why it hasn't respawned for me i don't know if it respawns on the weekly or after a week but right here there is supposed to be a haunted house event unfortunately i don't know if individuals Building a home on the plateau will mess with that spawn. Thankfully, this person left their house open so I can come in and get the gingerbread house. Nice, easy way to pick up two quick deviations, plus the beaver I showed you. That'll give you three, and that will be important for your cradle because you will need to collect three deviations to get to here. You'll need a total of six. Uh, I did mention Digby, and as I think about it, I didn't tell you how to get Digby. Right now, Digby is supposed to be when you mine. And I believe this post right here will show you... This is what the haunted house will look like. So if you come up to this plateau and you see a house that looks like this with the three hands holding the chest, you have located the haunted house. It's an event. If you need to know how to do it, then leave me a comment below. You should be able to figure that one out. One other thing that I believe I neglected to point out is if you're looking for tin, when you enter the area near Myers Market, you will start to find tin in the second zone. If you haven't made yourself one of these wonderful things, the Curiosity Catcher, the Curiosity Catcher is great. As you use it, it will point out the tin, it will point out copper. As you make the upgraded ones, it will start to point out other things. And finally, I'm not going to put it in this video because I don't want to ruin the surprise, but when you're doing the second zone, you only have to do four of the six rift anchors in order to unlock the monolith in order to then be able to unlock the next zone. I will 100% tell you, you want to come down here to the junkyard. There is a wonderful twisted insight to a developer's mind if you scour the junkyard and you find a pistol, it will teleport you into a minigame. If you find that mini game and you can't figure out how to do it, leave me a question, leave me a comment. I will, I will tell you the answer, but I don't want to spoil the surprise for you. So if you have not done the junkyard, make sure to double back and get it.
And that is it for today. I'm sorry for the discombobulated nature. Unfortunately, we can't go backwards on our characters. So sometimes I got to kind of do what I can with putting together video footage. If you have any specific questions on the first two zones of Once Human, leave those in the description below, or I'm sorry, leave those in the comments below, and I will try to get those answered. Now I'm going to get this into post so I can move myself into the third zone of Once Human.